What if there were an instrument that could make almost any sound imaginable and a few that you couldn't even imagine? <laughs> if it were thought of by a large percentage of non-musicians and even some music traditionalists as just a toy. The sequencer is still set up to do this. And I don't want that. What if some of them had keyboards attached to them, but their similarities to a piano stopped there? Probably figured out that I'm talking about synthesizers, and more specifically in this video, the various approaches that we can take when composing for them. You see, when we can make any sound imaginable, sometimes it can be kind of tricky, at least for a traditionally trained classical musician like me, to figure out how to fit them together and mold them into our composition. And sometimes it's really fun not to even try. Probably comes as no surprise to anyone at this point that I love synthesizers, and they kind of remind me of my primary instrument, the pipe organ, because they were both created to sort of emulate or imitate the timbres of other instruments, and they both fail to do so pretty miserably. But in their failed attempt to do that, they became something new and unique in their own right. Now, until about 10 years ago, all that I knew about synthesizers was that you had to wear a cape and play blistering prog rock solos on them. But then I started to get interested in film scoring and I learned about these imaginary synthesizers that lived inside your computer and made these preset wishy sounds. But when I started to try to make sounds on my own and incorporate them in my music, I wasn't quite sure what to do with these instruments that could seemingly do anything. But if we really strip it down, I think there are only three ways we can approach using synthesizers. Basically, we can play them like we would any instrument and just use the various colors they can produce as orchestration. Number B, we can embrace their unique quality, the one thing that they can do that other instruments cannot, and that's make unique new sounds. Or third of all, we can try to strike some sort of a balance between the two and create unique sounds that inspire us to play them in unique ways. And that's sort of where I like to live. <laughs> I am not anti-preset. In fact, if you're working to a deadline, they're really useful. And starting with a preset and sort of molding it into your own is something that is incredibly valuable. They also can allow you to focus just on the notes themselves. And if you know anything about me, I am a composer first and foremost. I love harmony. I love melody. I love counterpoint. I love part writing. All of those things that more traditional composers might be interested in. So as I mentioned before, this is basically treating a synthesizer or treating synthesis like you would orchestration. You're creating various colors that you can layer on top of each other in various ways to create interesting timbres but you're still more focused on the core material, the notes themselves. That's totally valid. I think that's a great way to write for synths. What I don't really understand in the preset world is the sort of one note soundtracks where someone else has made the patch and has done all of the inter interesting, I can't speak, and has done all the interesting stuff. And then you just press a key and don't add anything to it. Don't change it or modify it. Don't put anything around it or make it your own in any way. I'm not really sure 
what the purpose of that is or what you would get out of that creatively. But if it does inspire you to do something around that preset that someone else made, that's awesome. Um, well, your piano is a preset. This is a comment that I've seen in my own comment section and on many other comment sections on similar videos. And there's a major flaw in that argument. You see, a piano is an acoustic instrument. It has properties that are fixed. Its timbre is relatively fixed. A synthesizer is built expressly to synthesize sounds, to explore sound design. That's one of its major qualities. That's what you do with it. Comparing it to a single timbre instrument like a piano, it's a fairly reductive argument. I became very interested in sounds themselves after I had been studying piano and organ for a long time. So naturally these things that were designed to explore sounds, but also had keys attached to them, were sort of a gravitational pull for me. And after a couple of performance degrees, I was so burned out on playing and performing that I really wanted to deep dive into the sounds themselves, sort of crawl inside of a sound that was fascinating to me. Way different than anything that I had been exposed to in music school. And this is something I still love to do and exclusively held my interest for a couple of years. And then I started to get bored with what I was actually doing with the sounds. Because while the sounds were really interesting, my harmonic movement had become pretty stagnant. My harmonic rhythm had slowed down so much to accommodate these long evolving textures that I was making that it became pretty harmonically elementary, I felt like. And I love harmony so much that this didn't quite sit well with me. I think it's pretty easy to hear the difference if you listen to certain electronic tracks of mine and certain solo piano pieces or string arrangements that I've done in the past. I just write very differently for the two. Still, the great thing about starting with sound design is what it inspires me to do around it. And if I leave enough space for myself to improvise or to compose around that, then those are usually the things that I'm most happy with because they sort of combine the two worlds. Setting up a weird sequence and just letting that run and loop on repeat would get boring if it were just the sequence, but what I do around that I've found to be one of the most fascinating things, how I interact with a sort of stagnant, looping sequence. I have a habit when I sit down to make a new synth patch of turning it into a long sustained pad. I have a whole video about pads because I love them so much. I guess that's just the inner organist coming out, though I do wish the organ had LFOs. And this is actually great. These long sustained sounds are really great for revealing harmony issues that a quicker decay might not. So when you play a chord at the piano, it quickly evaporates. When you hold a chord on the organ, it's going to sustain until you release that chord. And synths can do either. So a polychordal progression might work very differently on piano than it does on the organ or on a synth.
As I mentioned, this is totally up to us with a synthesizer. The envelopes are everything. So if you're having trouble getting parts to work, say you wrote something on piano and it's not translating well, consider the decay and sustain relationship. And just changing that one parameter can make you write very differently as well if you happen to be writing on a synthesizer. As much as I love making great sounds, I still tend to think that it's what I do with them that is the most important thing. And nothing has helped me personally more in that regard than my study of harmony. If you would like to learn more about harmony and the way that I like to think about it, the ways that have helped me write my own music, I made a free PDF ebook. It's a free download down in the description below if you'd like to check that out. For the past several months, I've really been digging into the study of harmony again because I would like to bring more harmonic sophistication back to my electronic music because I really have just three primary goals for all of my music, but specifically my electronic music moving forward. I want it to maintain its emotional impact and tastefulness. Taste and tastefulness are kind of two different things. Maybe that's subject for another video. I would like to continue to explore sounds that excite me and inspire me to write in new ways. And I would like to combine that with a more sophisticated harmonic movement, maybe a faster harmonic rhythm again, where I'm not just sitting on one pedal tone for an entire track. And I hear so much of it, like so much of modern film music is that, so much of the more popular genres have such a slow harmonic movement now. There's nothing wrong with it. I enjoy all of those things, but I've taken a break from listening to that kind of thing just to try to re-enrich my harmonic palette. And I think when you achieve this sort of balance, you have a dual benefit. You still are able to draw the listener in because you maintain that emotional impact on the first listen, and they'll also return to it because there's musical depth there. And those are the things that those layers kind of reveal themselves on repeat listens. I still love sound design. And I still love harmony. And I'm beyond excited, just based on the experiments that I've been doing lately, to really focus on combining those two things more intentionally in my electronic music moving forward. I think the ambient genre is an incredible place, an incredible opportunity to explore this sort of combination because there's enough space to allow for more complex harmonic movement and evolving textures. So that's my plan for the future. As always, if you have thoughts on this, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to see intelligent, nuanced discussions. Those still happen on the internet, I think. <laughs>